A UCS B-Series blade is best described as an intelligent but deactivated hardware. Intelligent 2 and 4 sockets blades, featuring the latest Intel Exeon processors and innovative extended memory banks. These blades offer virtualized LAN and SAN converged adapters as well as local storage units. But why deactivated? As mentioned in the previous parts, the UCS B-Series is a fully abstracted infrastructure. That applies to the blades as well. A physical server or blade is defined by a combination of physical resources such as processors, memory, storage, BIOS, and peripherals. Each of these elements is represented by a detailed configuration profile. Needless to say, these configuration profiles vary depending on the hardware capabilities included in each blade. Now, let's add the configuration profiles for the physical elements to the rest of the abstracted infrastructure provided by the B-Series, such as the blade management, LAN and SAN converged connectivity, host firmware control, access policies, and much more. All these resources are available for us not just to create a logical server that represents the blade, but also to configure all the parts of the solution infrastructure in order for the blade to gain accessibility to the data center network resources. In other words, a complete logical server profile maintains config info about the server hardware, interfaces, fabric connectivity, and server and network identity. This logical server is called a service profile, and it's created using UCSM manually or dynamically in a matter of minutes. Naturally, different service profiles can be created depending on the blade capabilities. Also, the environmental factors like QoS and VLANs, as well as the operation requirements such as SAN boot, are included in the service profiles. As for every other task, UCSM is the service profile creation tool. However, since a full API set is available, a third-party management tool can be used to accomplish the same goal. As you can see, a logical server can be fully built and ready for that time when a decision is made to bring up a blade. So, back to what we mentioned at the beginning, the blade hardware is deactivated by default, but now we have a service profile ready for that blade. The process is simple. Associate each server with the corresponding service profile. That can be done manually or dynamically. It's very important to know that the server UUID can also be included in the service profile which means the blade burned in identity is completely overwritten. In other words, the blade is fully abstracted. This capability provides the administrator with the ability to deploy large scale compute environment on demand in a short period of time using a fully virtualized system. Another important point is the shared infrastructure resources. When a blade is associated to a service profile, immediately the B-series shared components are configured to accommodate. Virtual circuits are built, QoS and management paths are set, and policies are enforced. As you would expect, when a blade is disassociated from a service profile, the shared resources are immediately freed up. By default, the blade itself goes back to the factory default setting, the deactivated status. Let's check under the hood and have a closer look at these powerful service profiles. Many IT organizations implement a structured workflow model, which mainly consists of architects and operation teams. It is also common for organizations to have a single dedicated team for all designs and operation tasks. In all cases, a subject matter expert or SME is responsible of designing the service profiles and infrastructure policies in advance to meet the compute requirements. From there, the creation, deployment, and maintaining of service profiles is completely streamlined whether the SME or a different operation team is handling these tasks. Any service profile is a combination of three sets of resources, pools, policies, and templates. The SME examines the requirements and prepares these resources accordingly. 
The pools are collections of identities, physical or logical, that are available to the system. A UUID pool is created to overwrite the burned-in value in the blades for maximum hardware abstraction. The same concept applies to LAN resources such as MAC address and SAN resources such as WWNN and WWPN. The policies are administrator-defined sets of rules and operating characteristics such as BIOS and firmware control, boot policy, local disk configuration, and much more. These policies are the UCSM tools to propagate changes throughout the infrastructure in the sense that a change applied to a specific policy impacts all the service profiles using that policy. Another powerful benefit of UCSM policies is the ability to stage changes to be applied at a predetermined time or during a specific event. Take firmware updates as an example. The new firmware image can be applied at Blade's reboot time, which is a significant degree of flexibility. Also, the upgrade can be scheduled to be executed during the maintenance window or a light load time traffic period. Lastly, the templates resources, such as VNIC and VHBA templates, are very handy in accelerating the creation of service profiles. Just like with the policies, a change applied to a VNIC template impacts all service profiles using that template. For example, if a new VLAN is added to the template, it immediately becomes available on all virtual adapters created based on that VNIC template. The benefits are very obvious. A fully automated configuration change throughout the system infrastructure. Now that the required resources are covered, the SME is ready to design the service profiles. Conveniently, the UCSM offers a step-by-step -step wizard ranging from simple to expert configuration levels to streamline that process. So, as I'm sure you already noticed, we kept referring to the SME designing service profiles. The reason is directly related to the results of this designing process. A standalone manual service profile, an updated template, or an initial template. Let's examine each result. A single service profile or SP can be created manually and directly associated to a single blade. Obviously, this SP will be tailored to the targeted blade specification. When the association process is completed, the full system will be configured according to the SP setting. Virtual circuits will be built, VIFs will be pinned to the uplinks, and storage connections will be open. Similarly, host firmware policies will be applied during the blade boot-up process, as well as the boot and local disk policies. Simply, we have a live server now. But although it's a fully functional service profile, this method is not very effective in a large-scale deployment, which takes us to the more scalable option, service profile templates. Unlike manual SPs, a template provides a platform to generate large number of similar service profiles. As we mentioned earlier, pools are used to create templates. Consequently, every time a SP is created using a template, available entries are grabbed from the pools and added to that SP. As example, if a UUID pool for ops servers was used in building the ops department SP template, then each SP born to that template has a unique ops UUID pool entry. This powerful tool provides a mechanism for rapidly provisioning servers and automating infrastructure configuration. There are two main types of templates. The first type is updating template. Service profiles created from an updating template inherit all the specs of the template and remain connected to it. Any changes to the template automatically update the linked service profiles. As an example, consider a VLAN added to a VNIC template or a firmware update that needs to be applied to all related blades. That Obviously, is a very this is the recommended method process. to maximize on the system automation capabilities and implement changes at a large scale. 
As you would correctly assume, many safety nets are there to make sure a rogue change does not impact servers negatively. The second type is Initial Template. Service profiles created from an initial template inherit all the specs of the template as well. However, after the creation, the SP is no longer connected to the template, and any changes to the latter are not propagated to the newly born SPs. The trade-off is very clear when it comes to implementing large-scale changes, but there is also an added level of server protection by isolating the SPs. The decision to use a specific method depends on the business requirements and the adapted change regulations. In all cases, our system is now ready to move to the operation stage. Let's consider the recommended and mo most used service profile design, updated templates. The operation team can use UCSM or scripting or third-party management tools to generate service profiles from the predefined templates. Similar to migration, a service profile can be cloned at any point of time, and the clone can be associated to a similar blade. 